Hey guys, man, I dropped. I'm trying to hold everything at once. You know how I do for the pictures, thumbnail pictures for the videos, and I dropped my blade. I'm going to use the Nasset today. This is not the one that I have tons of uses on. This is one that I use just to evaluate products, evaluate razors, and that's what we're going to do today. And so this one had, it looks like it's going to be on its ninth shave. And I reset the knot on this brush. You've seen it a couple of times. And I had two spacers in here. And I thought maybe that was too much loft by a little bit. So I took out one of the nylon spacers. Now the issue is that started to be a nice, enjoyable shave. But then the knot popped out. Well, one of the things when you mount a knot is you sometimes need to rough up the surfaces. If they're too smooth, then silicone might have a tough time uh, joining to it. And so the nylon washers that I used, I uh, scored those a little bit with a kind of something like a, a really coarse sandpaper. And the same for the bottom of the knot here. This is a Umo knot, 24 millimeter. It's a really big knot for a 24. I mean, big splay, easy splay. I really like that about it. Nice soft tips. Looking forward to having this in my collection. Short little handle from uh, Wolf Whiskers. The 2019 Greensboro Meetup uh, was enjoyable to uh, meet the guy there. And, and I went ahead and bought the handle. I'm really glad I chose to do that. Uh, and this is the SHD knot from them. The finest badger SHD knot. I've got too many things in my hands. Uh, I'm going to drop something else if I'm not careful. Now, we are going to be revisiting. It's kind of common theme for the next two items. Weinstrass is a declaration grooming soap. The scent was made by Chatillon Lux. That's them. And it is a fougere type scent. And they wanted to put a top note of white grape on it and then you're just kind of supposed to get the idea of walking down a trail with the flora and fauna around you with base notes hints of things like sandalwood coumarin and musk and oak moss trouble is those base notes are nice and i look forward to those but they never really pan out in the soap it's possible that if I had the, uh, the EDT or the aftershave that I might really like that part of the scent. But mainly what I've gotten from this is the floral part. I like the grape. The grape is there. It's there in the beginning, but it doesn't linger. It fades, and then what I'm left with is the florals. And so let's give it another chance, though, because I only used it once. It was a limited edition run, and so I decided to go ahead and grab it before it became difficult to grab because, you know, Chatillon Lux is just known for making some amazing scents. And part of this, some of the notes in this really spoke to me. So let's just see, you know, from the tub, yeah, it's, I do smell the grape, but it's just so floral. Let's try it again. Anyway, I may end up, you know, passing it on to somebody else. But it is worth a try to see if something else comes through in terms of those accords, the scent profiles. In the same vein, I'm going to give the Masamune. The top cap is the Masamune, and the bottom, the base plate here, is the original Masamune, which means it's the mildest combination that Tatara makes. And so we're going to put the nasa in it the first blade i tried in this razor in this configuration was the feather which of course is a touchy blade sometimes and with some mild razors the feather blade just puts them in their best light possible but other times and it's just arbitrary other times it Acts a little bit tenuous, a little bit uh, 
nervous, a little bit high maintenance, that sort of thing. Now I'm uh, taking my time to make sure the blade is all lined up properly. There we go. And we're set. The Nasset does very well for me in many, many razors, and so hopefully this will um, be one of them. At least show me a different Tatara, sorry, a different side of the Masamune. It doesn't have a lot of support close to the edge from the bottom. Of course, the top cap comes right up to the edge, but on the bottom it's got this slot here and but we're not talking about tons of support i mean it's not bad it's not as bad as some okay so i'm gonna get my face wet i depending on how i smell after this i've got some triumph aftershave from sterling and i continue with sterling executive man balm just in case I feel like I need a balm instead of something with alcohol in it. So I've got two things to choose from. And I just placed an order for Sterling Intrepid Man. I think, uh, is it Creed who has their original Santal uh, something? And it is a, uh, that's what Intrepid Man is based out of. So it's got sandalwood and 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 something else in there. Um, I'm looking forward to trying that. I was tempted to wait for the used market to bounce a used one back uh, to make that available, and then I could pick that up. But I like sterling so much. I can. I just figured let's go ahead and pay retail for it because those guys are tremendous, and I'll pay a little bit extra considered a donation to their company in these hard times. They're a small business. They do make a lot of different scents. They have a, a little a physical place that you can actually walk into. Um, and what is it, Adrian, Michigan, I think? Uh, I can't remember if they're in Michigan or Ohio, Indiana. I can't remember where they are. I'm getting them confused with maybe declaration grooming or something like that. So I think there may be an Adrian, I'm not sure. So I have long wanted to try the Nag Nag Champa, if I'm pronouncing that right, a very spicy shave soap. So I ordered a sample of that. And then I ordered the EDT, the cologne for Tuscany. That's the brand of soap that I'm just, I really like. I like the balm as well. And I don't like the aftershave splash very much, but on clearance was the EDT. And so I couldn't resist because I got it. They said they're discontinuing the scent. So it's possible after that EDT is done being on clearance, it's not going to be available. So I thought, let's go ahead and grab it while it's on sale. And the Intrepid Man soap. So a jar of soap a bottle of cologne, and a sample of soap. I've got coming to me maybe in the next week or so. All right. I'm going to get this brush back in the water. We've got the blade mounted. The soap is ready to go. So let me get my face wet. And 24 hours, roughly, since my last shave, so that's pretty average. And I think we're ready to whip it up. I did look at my loading information, and so a 40-second load looks like it might be about right for this type of brush. You know, fairly soft, badger. Shake out some of the soap. This hasn't been used in several months. Okay. 40 seconds, and we will wait until, wait five more seconds for the numbers to get all around and easy to remember. There we go. And so we will go until the 30 second mark on the next minute. So yeah, the grape 
does come up right away, and so that part is definitely uh, true and enjoyable, but it just fades and gives way to those florals. And that is 30 seconds. It's, it's staying a little bit pasty, and when that happens, I like to bring it back a little bit by putting some water on the soap. A quarter teaspoon. Just so we get the right amount of, uh, get a good amount of soap on the brush. So let's see, 10 more seconds. So 46 to 56 now. Really like this brush. Brush not, but man, I've had to reset it a couple of times. Coming out, and that's okay. Uh, silicone means that's what you do sometimes. If you have kind of missed the boat in terms of maybe you didn't put enough glue in there. And I'm fine with that. Just It's easy to scrape away the old silicone and just do it again. The hard part is the patience that you have to have. As you wait for it to cure, you know, after you set the new knot. So the bottom of the brush was, bottom of the base knot there, the glue disc was scored, and uh, it is now, and and so was the nylon, top of the nylon washer. So hopefully we have nice, good grip. This is Icarus Base, one of my favorites. I did bring a milk steak soap to you recently, so we'll kind of be able to have those two bases in recent memory as we work here. Three teaspoons now are in play. If the florals just back off a little bit and let those other elements shine through, then I might be a keeper. And that's just me. That's my own preferences. Uh, plenty of guys out there like the floral stuff. I just usually don't like to smell it. Don't like to smell like it. I'm starting to notice more of the greenery instead of the sweeter floral notes. And I like that. I'm glad about that. Some elasticity there. I don't want to push it too hard. Let's just go with this. It looks like it'll be enough lather to do the job, and I can always add a little bit more water later. Uh, 
get my face wet again. And let's see what happens. Well, uh, not feels great. Backbone feels perfect. It, with the handle being this short, it is more geared toward a face. Lathering application. Alan, if you're watching, I am so sorry that you're having problem getting on the waiting list for Wolf Whiskers. I'm sure you're in good company. I'm sure there's just tons of guys trying to get on that. Good luck as you try each time. I'm starting to kind of fling soap around here. Yeah, this feels terrific. Nice and soft. Big and soft knot. Kind of all the thousands of tips. I assume there are more than a thousand tips in this thing. All just kind of blending in to make one soft entity. Boars are usually not that way, at least when they're young. This is nice. I am noticing the green part of the scent more this shave than I did early on. And there was a discussion online. Somebody had a soap that was just a little bit too much for them. And one of the things that was recommended was leave it unopened. I'm sorry, leave it opened for a month and go back and try it again because it can often take the edge off of a soap. And, uh, and in this case, if, those, if I can get those florals away, or if those are something that really jump out to me uh, and last during the first couple of months of use and then it it backs off to all these other items that I like, then hey, we might be in good shape. All right. So, Nasset Masamune head configuration. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's better than the feather. Smoother. Doesn't feel, you know, picky, tricky. It is more vocal than some of the other razors that I have. Uh, feeling maybe a little bit of drag. It's, it's kind of a deal, oh, I felt a little twinge right there. Did I have a bump that I went over? I felt like uh, I didn't angle the wrong way. Who knows, but... Uh, there we go. And we can... Lay down a little bit more. Another thing I was seeing in, on discussions today is a term I hadn't really heard before, I don't think called lather planing. And I had just experienced it the other day where your lather has a bit of a thickness to it, a little bit of a viscosity, maybe it needs more water, and it, I think it's particularly going to happen to you with milder razors because they need they have less exposure, and so they need to get as close as the skin as possible. And so if you, if you have a thicker than it should be uh, lather on your face, then the blade may not be able to get where it needs to get. Or if it's a mild razor, the angle needs to be perfect. And, it, and then in that case, you're just not going to be able to cut if you don't have that right angle. And so that's it, definitely going to be more pronounced if you have a milder razor with less exposure. But if you have something really aggressive, then I don't think you're going to experience as much pl uh, lather planing uh, 
um, lather hydroplaning, if you will, where uh, if, for those of you not in um, America uh, or not familiar with that term, uh, in the driving world, um, if some water is sitting on the road and you and your car and your tires go over the water, there are certain conditions where your tire will just lose contact with the road as the, as the water keeps it from touching the road because of the speed you're going. And that's called hydroplaning. And, and so lather planing is like that, where the lather sits on your skin and it's a little too thick for the razor that you're using. And so it keeps that blade, it lifts that blade up off of your skin so that you don't get a good cut. So let's rinse. Okay, I just finished adding a half a teaspoon because I felt like maybe the lather needed a little bit more hydration there. And because of that drag I was experiencing, as, as well as just some other feels. And so just half a teaspoon is, is what I added. And I mixed it in and integrated it. Still feels terrific on my face. And this nice soft badger brush. Puts it in a really good light. This is kind of feeling a little on the pasty side. I might, might touch it up with a little bit of water here. I mean, it's okay, but, you know, always searching for that perfect lather. And when you add water and all of a sudden more lather is coming around your brush and you just see more lather on your face, then you know, yep, you were right to add more water. So we've almost got six. Now, I think we're at four teaspoons, almost four. All right, cross grain now. Yeah, definitely still some, some drag there, but, and it's just in comparison to some other razors. How does the lather feel? It's very slick, very creamy. And so I believe the lather is in a good spot. I don't think it's what's getting in the way of the, the razor in this case. See, this is the second pass. That little twinge I felt is not bothering me anymore. And sometimes that's just a little thing that maybe it's a kind of nick where it doesn't actually, it, it nicks you enough to where you feel the twinge, but not enough to where anything comes to the surface and you get any weepers or anything like that. Guys, I definitely underwatered this soap by a little bit because as I was doing that rinse just now I just felt the soap stick to my face and so I think that was gonna me should have pushed it a little bit more but that's all right I'm still getting a good shave but I'm I put another maybe teaspoon of water in the lather and as you can see, I still have a good bit. See, now that's more along the lines of what we might want to be seeing. I still have, and then you know that you were right to add more water. If you have a lather, you look at the quantity in the bowl, you add a teaspoon of water, and you mix, 
and then that quantity increases, you know you should have added more water and you were right to do that. Man, this brush, I enjoy this knot. Looks terrific. So this is the finest badger, super high density, SHD from uh, Manchuria, not from Umo, O-U-M-O. And to be honest, I might even still be able to add some water to this. That's nuts. Yeah, that's great. That's what a good soap can do. All right, third pass. So, ignore my comments about drag. I want to make sure that I have a have the right lather before I tell you that this razor has a bit of drag to it. So that would be my mistake in this case. And now we'll reverse direction on this tricky spot. The scent is not strong. It's there when you want it. It's there when you want to smell it. It's around you in a light cloud. Let's take a good whiff of the, the bowl here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm smelling more of the fougere notes. And the floral has backed off. You see, folks, this is what can happen when you come back to a soap after a bit. Your nose gets used to a certain part of it, or maybe that part is so volatile it has a chance to evaporate. Doesn't mean this is a scent that I want to keep uh, necessarily, but it just means I'm smelling something different now. I may want to use it again just to be sure. Because after all, I've got a ton of Declaration soaps that smell amazing. And so even if this is interesting, I've got to compare it to those. Because if I ever use this again, I'm using it in place of those, right? It is a little bit on the feminine side. But those sweet florals, the honeysuckle that's in there, maybe some iris, I can't remember. But I know honeysuckle's a part of it. Uh, those those definitely are on the feminine side for me. But the, the greenery parts... And maybe the, the sweetness from the grape are coming out and helping it not to be as, as feminine as you might normally think from florals. So it's definitely a piece of work. I think it's well designed for, for what it is. It's uh, it just for what it, what it is just may not be for me, you know, just not a good match for my own particular preferences. It's not a bad scent at all. It's a really good scent. Okay, so that's the third pass. I'm going to rinse and kind of do a little inspection. All right, well, after taking a look at everything, I'm really happy with the closeness here. And so this looks like a very good match for the blade and razor together as a combo. The Nasset inside the Tatara Masamune. I, I, the feel of it just isn't as nice as some of the other razors that I have. And, of course, with the Masamune head, this is only my second try. So this is still kind of in the realm of first impression. So, men, take that for what it's worth. Um, it, does, it does vibrate and sound off, you know, a little bit. So it's not quite as smooth, you know, that way. But this is a good match. It was reasonably comfortable, other than that slight tenuousness due to the kind of vibrations and, and, and such that I was mentioning. But it, uh, reasonable comfort and a nice close shave are, are two great things to have. I think, why don't we go ahead, now what do I smell right now? 
pretty pretty identical to the the soap uh, the lather when I had it in my face it's just much lighter because everything's been rinsed away I did run this soap to dry even after adding what I did this lather that is still remaining really does need even more water and so I that was my mistake I really just forgot how much water Icarus can take and this is a soap like some of the best out there that I enjoy I can really pump a lot of water into getting it all elastic looking with those long peaks and things like that I, I can do that with Icarus and I should have done that this time and I just I just didn't so here is some triumph I feel like going ahead with the alcohol splash and I picked the triumph on purpose because just in case there was a little bit of a feminine nature to the to the soap triumph is not feminine at all and uh, it's not heavy but it is it's not heavy and dark but it's a nice cologne type scent very good I really like triumph and triumph is so strong that it kind of takes the takes the soap takes the wine straws and puts it in its place, puts it in the back seat. It's really hard to pick up a lot of the notes in this because the triumph is in, oh, you know what? The honeysuckle jumping out at me in a really solo kind of way. It's like the, it's like all the other notes have been held back by the triumph aftershave splash and uh, it's, but it's letting for some reason the honeysuckle through. How about that? It's funky. And I never noticed those bass parts of the accord. I'm, I'm looking for my cap. Why am I out oh, there? It is. I never noticed the sandalwood. I never noticed really the musk, the oak moss. Yeah, they're just too subdued for my nose, perhaps, is what it is. All right, I want to clean up my gear. Good shave, though. This is one of the reasons I love using silicone to set my brush knots. Sure, I had to set this one three different times, but it's, it seems to be holding pretty secure. The, the scoring and etching may be something you guys want to incorporate every time instead of waiting for the knot to pop out. Uh, now, granted, I've, I've done this many times and I rarely have a knot pop out, but I guess maybe the, the bottom glue disc of this knot was just extra smooth. And then, of course, I'm, I'm attaching it to... Uh, plastic washers, nylon washers that are also very smooth. And But even with that, I do not regret it at all because I was able to get this thing perfectly set. If I was setting it with epoxy, it's done. You pretty much can't unset it with epoxy. You basically have to destroy the handle to get the knot out. And of course, you don't want to destroy a beautiful handle like this. And, and so when you have a new knot coming in and you, you don't know what it's going to be like, you don't know what kind of backbone it's going to have. And that really affects how deep you set it. So with silicone, you can try and try again. With the epoxy, you just hope you get it right the first time. And maybe if you don't, you just have to sell the brush, try to find another one and keep looking. With silicone, you can tweak it. So I tried it with two spacers first. It was nice. But I felt like I wanted to try it with just one spacer. So I backed that out, yanked the knot out, took a spacer out, reattached it, had to re-glue it again with this time with some scoring to, to really let that silicone anchor the knot. And, and presto, it's perfect. It's perfect. Nice, easy splay, soft, and the uh, it doesn't splay too much. So I feel like I'm just working on the sides of the bristles. And so I, I just I just think that's absolutely spot on where I wanted it. So very happy there. So let's take this uh, Masamune. You can see the the samurai samurai guy here. The Masamune top cap is easily seen and discerned by this non-threaded portion right here. It's about seven six or seven millimeters in length and that is non-existent when you're thinking about the other top cap the nodachi 
top cap, which is more aggressive. So that's how you can tell those two heads apart. And it's easy to tell the Nadachi handle because the dots are only on this part and the rest is matte and solid undotted. I've got a Masamune handle coming in. And so I am going to try that out with the Masamune head. I, I think the pictures that I've seen of the, the Masamune with the dots, I, I think it looked, I thought it looked kind of plasticky and kind of cheesy. And I can tell you that it is much nicer when you have it in person. And so if you're like me and you look at those pictures and thinks, it doesn't really look like an expensive razor. It just kind of looks like a piece of gray plastic. It looks like gray plastic instead of matte stainless steel. When you get it in your hand, though, it's a different story, and it does look really good. Now, with that said, if I found out that I loved this razor, I might be interested in that black version, right? That looked really cool. Also, I want to say something that I learned from you guys. I posted, uh, I believe I learned it from one of you guys, this shape here. I was thinking ninja or samurai, and I don't really think of round capsule type shapes and bubbles when I think of samurais. And so what I thought perhaps it could be was just a contemporary design in the Japanese way. And someone let me know that this shape of a round bubble with another one sitting on top of it, I think is a, a symbol of good luck in Japan or good fortune or good hospitality or something like that. And so that's what that might be why they chose to use that in this razor. And so someone of uh, Japanese heritage or culture is, is going to identify with that and that's going to mean something to them. So that's neat. All right. The Triumph. Oh, man, that smells so good. Oh, nice. Nice. You know, I might just have to get rid of the wine straws because I've just got so many other good soaps. It's interesting. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Because once I sell it, it might be hard to get back, right? All right. Well, the brush was a big win today. It's always good to have a project come to fruition. To have that handle sitting, sitting there for months while I figured out which knot I wanted to put in it. Then ordering the knot and waiting for a month for it to get here from China. And then waiting for it to cure, trying to figure out the right height, the right loft, things like that. So the brush is a big star today. The lather was my fault. It was just a little too thick, and that was probably why I got some drag. However, this razor is not all that mild. It really is not all that mild. And it but it, and so it easily cut through the the lather that was there. So it didn't do any lather planing. The Nasset worked pretty well in it. Happy with the matchup there in general. And there we go. I did, I'm happy that I learned a little bit more about the Weinstraw scent. I was able to appreciate the, the greener elements and the, the, the distinctly feminine florals were, were somehow subdued this time. I was happy about that. Maybe my nose is getting used to it. Who knows? And of course, we're finishing off with the Triumph, which smells amazing. So there we go. So I ended up using, I believe, four and a half teaspoons of water. And I really probably should have used five and a half teaspoons, maybe even six, with this amount of loading. And I ended up with, and I, so it doesn't look like with this one, I need to load the 40 seconds. I definitely should go 30 seconds next time. And then maybe, maybe five teaspoons of water might be around the right point. But the priority is for me to remember that man this thing can take water and it can be elastic and creamy at the same time it's a quality champion soap in my opinion and so load it up with water because it's going to hold it and be amazing we are done and that was a good shave all right all good cleaning up enjoying the triumph oh man so i'm going to do a I'm going to do a contest in the, maybe in the next month or so. Um, I'll figure out exactly how I want to do it and try to keep it fair and all that. Uh, 
maybe what I'll what I'll have you do somewhere in the middle of the video, somewhere in the video, I'll I'll tell you a code like X Y Z, and then you can go to sugardaddyshaves.com um, slash contest maybe something like that. I don't know. I haven't created it yet, and plug in that code and your username and maybe maybe your email address you know somewhere I can contact you and then um, then I'll just pick from uh, I'll have a random number generator you know pick if, if five people have have watched that part of the video they talk about the code and get online and do that then random number generator will pick one of those people and I'll send you whatever we talk and I'll I'll mention what it is like uh, if it's a tub of a Taylor of Old Bond Street a soap that I don't really use then uh, you know, I'll tell you what it is so you can be interested in it or not. Uh, international shipping may be, uh, may be tough, but we can, we can see, see about that. Maybe if you're international, maybe you contribute a little bit to it, uh, depending on how much, how much it might be. We'll see. All right. So we can look forward to that in the coming, coming weeks. Uh, I don't really like to do a lot of sensational stuff. Uh, I like to keep it pretty easy going. I'm not trying to drum up a bunch of subscribers. I'm just trying to put good content out there, but I, I just feel like doing something for you, regular viewers, and um, and so maybe I thought that that would be cool. All right, I think we're good. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I sure hope this video has got something in it to help you out. Good night.